fellow saints and future saints you know I think it's fair to say that at least 90% of the people who claim to be saved are also the same people who stay up at night worried about if they're really saved or not unfortunately this is way too common and it's the number one weapon the enemy uses against the body of Christ doubt specifically doubting your salvation you see if he can create doubt in your head then he can also create methods to alleviate that doubt and these methods that he'll propose to you will be works as in good works and believing that good works will somehow allow you to keep your salvation or perhaps to earn points with God only end up in disappointment that's because no matter how hard you try you'll always end up failing sliding backwards sinning and then you'll become depressed and you'll think you've you've lost your salvation and the cycle continues my friends God didn't intend to give you a salvation of depression his salvation is one of peace love comfort and security and that's only possible through his son Christ Jesus and not your good works when you finally realize that you have no part in your salvation then that's when you'll experience true peace you see rightly dividing God's Word is critical it's the only way you'll truly enjoy the comfort that salvation is meant to give you now not rightly dividing God's Word leads to confusion and the author of confusion knows it's his weapon of choice to keep you confused to steal your joy peace comfort and security he hates you folks we know from scripture that the sword of truth is God's Word let's look at a passage together in Ephesians 6 chapter 6 verse 17 and take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit which is the Word of God you see the sword of the Spirit here in in the King James Version other translations uh, read the sword of truth but either way we know the sword is God's Word now let's look at another passage that that speaks specifically about this sword once again in Hebrews chapter 4 verse 12 for the Word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword piercing even to the dividing a di dividing asunder of sa of soul and spirit and of the joints and marrow and is a discerner of thoughts and intents of the heart you see God's sword of truth is sharper than any sword man could ever make using the sword of truth is using right division not using the sword of truth is like using a plastic knife to cut steel it doesn't work out so well and it leaves a lot of marks and scrapes but never really gets to the point of truth the truth is the fact is you can be secure in your salvation you can sleep well at night you can have assurance that one day you'll be spending eternity in our Lord's presence salvation is a work of God more than that salvation is solely a work of God assurance of salvation is possible if salvation is a work of God alone if salvation depends on man's ability then it would be answering two questions what works are necessary to meet God's approval for righteousness the second question how many works are necessary not one person can answer those questions we have no information to answer them therefore assurance of salvation is impossible if it depends on a person's works or good deeds however if we let salvation depend on the work of God then 
then we can have assurance of salvation. But only when we let God do all the work and we stop trying to do it for Him. The scriptures make it clear. It's impossible righteousness by doing good works. Isaiah makes it clear what our good works look like to God. In Isaiah 64 verse 6 he writes, But we all as an unclean thing, we are all as an unclean thing, and all our righteousness are as filthy rags, and we all do fade as a leaf, and our iniquities like the wind have taken us away. This Old Testament witness of what God thinks about man's good works is not very impressive, my friends. Apostle Paul sums it up well when he says in Romans chapter 3, verse 23, For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. There's only one man who's ever lived that was seen by God as completely righteous, without blemish, without fault, without sins, his only begotten son, Jesus Christ. In Romans chapter 1, verse 4, And declared to be the Son of God with power, according to the Spirit of holiness, by the resurrection from the dead. One very good reason we can have assurance of salvation and sleep well at night is written for us in 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4. Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel which I preached unto you, which also ye have received, and wherein ye stand, by which also ye are saved. If ye keep in memory what I preached unto you, unless ye have believed in vain. For I delivered unto you first of all that which I also received, how that Christ died for our sins according to scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he rose again the third day according to the scriptures. Paul sums up our, our being made righteous through the righteousness of of Christ Jesus in Romans chapter 3 verse 21 through 28 let's take a look at it but now the righteousness of God without the law is manifested being witnessed by the law and the prophets even the righteousness of God which is by faith of Jesus Christ unto all and upon all them that believe for there is no difference for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God being justified freely by his grace through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus whom God hath set forth to be a propitiation through faith in his blood to declare his righteousness for the remission of sins that are past through the forbearance of God to declare I say at this time his righteousness that he might be just and the justifier of him which believeth in Jesus where is the boasting then it is excluded by what law of works nay but by the law of faith therefore we conclude that a man is justified by faith without the deeds of the law. And Paul continues to hit it home in a few verses later in Romans chapter 4 verses 1 through 5. What shall we say then that Abraham our father as pertaining to the flesh ha hath found? For if Abraham were justified by works he hath whereof to glory but not before God for what saith the scripture Abraham believed God and it was counted unto him for righteousness now to him that worketh is the reward not reckoned of grace but of debt but to him that worketh not but believeth on him that justifieth the ungodly 
His faith is counted for righteousness. This undoubtedly is one of the best scriptures ever written, declaring our hope and comfort. It clearly declares that righteousness cannot be obtained through good works. Righteousness is given to those who believe. It's not for those who do good works. Paul explains this even further to the Galatians in Galatians chapter 2 verse uh, verse 16 let's see here uh, I do not frustrate the grace of God for if righteousness come by the law then Christ is dead in vain now Galatians 2.16 Knowing that a man is not justified by the works of the law, but by faith of Jesus Christ, even we have believed in Jesus Christ, that we might be justified by the faith of Christ, and not by the works of the law. For by the works of the law shall no flesh be justified. Now, in verse, uh, in Galatians chapter 2, 21 which I have up now uh, I do not frustrate the grace of God for if righteousness come by the law then Christ is dead in vain is it clear yet for you folks salvation and God's righteousness are available through trusting Christ believing he died for you and rose from the dead read 1 Corinthians 15 1 through 4 very carefully it's all you need to understand what salvation is all about. Don't add to it. Don't remove anything from it. Just believe and trust it. Only, only by having faith in Christ's work, his death and resurrection, can you be justified before God on that day. There's no other way to do that but through Jesus Christ. It doesn't matter how many good works you do, they won't count towards your salvation. None of them will. None of them will count. Not one. Our Lord God desires that you're secure in eternal life by only putting your faith in His Son. Let's look at Romans 8, chapter 8, verse 1. There is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. No condemnation means no condemnation. None. Zip. Zilch. God doesn't see your sins. He sees His Son's righteousness instead. The most important things is to be saved. The second most important thing is to know you're saved. Everyone who places their trust in Christ Jesus can be certain that they'll be in heaven just as Christ is right now. Believe what God says in His Word. Let's look at what Paul says in Ephesians chapter 1, verse 7. In whom we have redemption through His blood, the forgiveness of sins according to the riches of His grace. Notice Paul says, we have redemption. We have it right now. It's not something hoped for. It's not something in the future. It's not something that only happens when you die. We have it now, right now. Salvation happens in a twinkling of an eye, in a moment, the very second you believe and trust in Christ Jesus. Again, read 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4. It explains it very well. Look at something else Paul wrote in Colossians chapter 1 verse 13 through 14 who hath delivered us from the power of darkness and hath translated us into the kingdom of his dear son in whom we have redemption through his blood even the forgiveness of sins what I want you to notice here is the past tense rescued from darkness transferred to the kingdom redemption and forgiveness are past actions that become present possessions for each of us right now not future hopes 
but things God did in the past when a person believes the gospel. In the same way that redemption and forgiveness is a present possession, so too is eternal life. Eternal life doesn't begin with a, when a person dies. It begins at the very moment of belief, the moment of salvation. How long is eternal life? How long is eternal? If you have eternal life, can it be lost? Of course not. It's eternal at the very second you become a child of God through Christ Jesus. More proof of this is found in Ephesians and Romans. Ephesians chapter 2 verse 8 and 9 For by grace are ye saved through faith, and that not of yourselves. It is a gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. And in Romans chapter 5 verse 8 and 9 But God commendeth his love towards us, in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Much more than that, being now justified by his blood, we shall be saved from wrath through him. You know, there's an old English hymn and uh, that expresses our security and relationship in God. And it reads something like this. Near. So near am I to God, nearer I cannot be, for in the person of his Son I'm just as near as he. Dear, so dear am I to God, dearer I cannot be, the love wherewith he loved his Son, such is his love for me. We begin a new life in Christ through trusting in him and him alone. No amount of good deeds can approve us to God. Trusting in Christ is believing what God says. The Bible says that Christ died for your sins and was raised from the dead. 1 Corinthians 15, 1-4, once again. Very important passage. I highly recommend you read it over and over again and memorize it. All you have to do is trust and believe this gospel with the right motivation. Okay? Some people confuse the simple gospel of trusting in Christ with other uh, gospels outside of God's word. You might have heard a preacher say something like, invite Christ into your heart or accept Christ as your personal savior. These are gospels outside of God's truth and they cause confusion and worst of all, they cause false salvation. Go read 1 Corinthians 15, one through four over and over and over again until you finally get it and when you do, you'll suddenly experience a joy, peace, and comfort that you, must, that you most likely never experienced before. Furthermore, salvation is not something that can be lost because, because you sin, okay? Jesus' Jesus's death solved the sin problem forever. What you do or do not do has no effect on your salvation because it's Christ's work that that's sufficient before God not your work listen dear friend believing that you can commit some sin and lose your salvation is to believe that your sin is greater than Christ's work on the cross and the power of the resurrection such belief creates confusion insecurity a works-based religion and it, it actually it insults the integrity of our Lord God. The only way you could ever lose your salvation is by rejecting it in the first place. And that's through unbelief. By not believing and not trusting. You've literally signed your own death sentence. My hope is that those of you who are suffering with doubt just know that doubt is not what God wants for you. He's not trying to punish you with doubt and insecurity because you've been bad. This doubt is coming from the enemy to rob you of what he's unable to have. Peace, love, comfort, and security. And most of all, to be made a son of God through Jesus Christ. A fellow heir inheriting 
heavenly programs. So, my friends, be comforted in knowing that our time here is coming to a close very soon, okay? And all this planet Earth nonsense will come to an end. And a new pro program will, be, uh, will begin, one with love and peace, with our Lord Jesus in full control. Thanks for studying with me, dear saints. I love you all. Peace and grace in Christ Jesus be unto you and your families. And I'll see you on my next video.